Hi everyone, it's Agnieszka Murdoch from 5 Minute Language. Welcome to my channel. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. So today's video is all about how to start learning Spanish from scratch. And I'm really happy that you're here today because Spanish is a fantastic language. I have attempted learning Spanish many times and I always come back to it. I've never reached an advanced level yet, but I'm working towards improving my Spanish. So I'm going to talk you through the process I've gone through to learn Spanish and the things that I found useful. And I hope this can help you on your journey because when you're only just starting out, it can be really intimidating and quite overwhelming to be frank. Learning a new language is a big job. And when you know where to start, when you get guidance from somebody who's done it before, it just makes it so much easier and so much less intimidating. So I'm going to mention some techniques that I recommend and also some resources that I've used that I want to recommend as well. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to say is when you start learning Spanish, it really helps to understand pronunciation at the very start. So you might think that when you're a beginner, when you don't know anything about Spanish, you won't be able to speak, so it doesn't really matter if you're pronouncing things correctly. But actually, you want to set yourself up for success. You want to set yourself up in a way that will allow you to speak straight away. Because that way, you know, even if you're learning the very basic phrases, so things like hola or gracias or de nada, you need to be able to say those things out loud and that will be your speaking practice. Even if you're not having conversations as such yet, you will be able to practice speaking by just saying things out loud. So make sure you learn the pronunciation. Spanish pronunciation is relatively easy for English speakers at least because things tend to be pronounced how they're written and, and a lot of the letters are pronounced in the same way as in English. There are several different words that don't exist in English, so you just need to make sure you familiarize yourself with them. There are also slight differences between how people speak Spanish in Spain and how they speak it in South American countries, for example. So you need to kind of be familiar with that. Um, that applies, for example, to the pronunciation of S's and Z's, and you will notice some small differences. So don't be confused, just know that there are regional differences. So, you know the pronunciation, time for basic vocabulary. And when it comes to basic vocabulary and phrases, I really recommend that you start with a free app, such as Duolingo, for example, or something like that. So, all of the different language apps that you can find probably have the same kind of basic stages, where you just learn the kind of introductory phrases to introduce yourself, to greet people, to say very basic sentences. So make sure you start with that. Then you can move on to familiarizing yourself with cognates. Cognates are basically words that exist in Spanish and they also exist in English. They have different pronunciation, but they have the same origin. So there is an overlap and you will find that there are hundreds, if not thousands of words like that, that you can memorize very easily because they're so similar to words in English. So this can really save you time knowing that and knowing which words overlap. One thing to be aware of though, is that there will be some false friends. So if you just Google Spanish cognates, you will be able to see a list of cognates that you can start memorizing straight away. And also make sure you Google English Spanish false friends, just so that you're aware that some of those words will be identical, but they will actually mean completely different things in both languages. Okay, the next thing you want to do when you're learning Spanish is familiarize yourself with sentence structure. So that's something that will help you start making your own sentences. You need to know exactly how sentences work. So I'm talking about affirmative sentences, questions and negative sentences. And it's all very straightforward. If you've ever learned French before, or if you're French, then you will find it particularly easy because it kind of translates um, almost word for word. But sentence structure in Spanish is also incredibly similar to the English sentence structure. So it's subject, verb, object. In English, for example, that is, I like coffee, I is the subject, like is the verb, and coffee is the object. 
In Spanish, the sentence structure is exactly the same. So it's subject, verb, object. So you know that when you learn the pronouns, so yo, tu, el, ella, so I, you, he, she, and then you learn the verbs and some vocabulary, you will be able to start putting very basic sentences together. When it comes to questions that's in Spanish, it's actually really easy compared to how they're formed in English. So in English, you need that helping verb. So for example, um, when, when you have the sentence, I like coffee, and um, you want to ask somebody if they like coffee, you need do. So do you like coffee? In Spanish, all you need to do is really use your intonation in order to form a question. For example, you live in Spain. In Spanish is vives en España. And if you want to ask a question, you just need to use intonation um, with a kind of question mark at the end. So, vives en España? That is a question in Spanish. And the final type of structure that you need to be familiar with is negative sentences. So, how do you say you don't live in Spain, for example? So, in Spanish, that will be tu no vives en España. So, you just add that no in front of the verb and that is your negative sentence. So that's why I said it's even easier than in French because in French you've got two words that you need to form um, negative sentences but in Spanish it's just one, it's just the no in front of the verb. Okay, the next thing you want to be doing once you know the pronunciation, the basic words and phrases, the sentence structure and how you conjugate verbs you want to start reading straight away. And reading is such a great way to learn a new language, even if you're a beginner, because you see language in context, you see sentences, and all you need to do when you're learning a new language is learn vocabulary and know how to put it into sentences, how to form sentences. So reading is a great way of seeing those words in action. And one thing I really recommend is Ollie Richards' um, courses. He's got introductory courses in many different languages and Spanish is one of them. It's probably one of the more popular ones because of how many people want to learn Spanish. Um, but I definitely recommend it. It's a course that is based around reading. So you learn the basics of the language through seeing it in context as part of stories. And it's a great way of learning. I always say, you know, spend at least 70% on reading, even if you're a beginner, because that is really what's going to make an impact. So I'm going to link Ollie's um, course in the description box below. Make sure you check it out. Um, and yeah, I really recommend it. Okay, and the final element of learning, which is very important as well, but I have left it for the end, is listening and speaking. And there is a great app. Um, again, another app I want to recommend is something called Jump Speak, and it's something that uses artificial intelligence to help you practice speaking in Spanish. Um, it's something that you have access to all the time, you know, unlike, unlike a physical tutor, if you want to practice speaking with a language partner, obviously you need to set up a meeting uh, with them on an online or an online call. But with Jump Speak, you have access to that artificial intelligence tutor um, 24 seven. So you can just jump, literally <laughs> jump straight into the app and practice speaking with them. So it covers all levels, including beginners. I've used it. I found it quite useful and inter an interesting concept, actually. Um, if you're somebody who is used to traditional um, kind of ways of learning. So make sure you give it a go as well. I've linked it in the description box. So the final thing I'm going to say is grammar. I didn't really mention grammar. Um, I guess the only kind of element of grammar I touched on is sentence structure. So sentences, questions and negative sentences. And that is something that you should probably do as a beginner. But don't get too kind of fixated on learning grammar, or learning the theory and reading the definitions of different grammatical concepts, I would say just try making basic sentences straight away. And if you make mistakes, that's fine. You will learn from them. So that's it. Make sure you leave me a comment to let me know why you're learning Spanish. And I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time. Bye.